Thanks for my guys and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Now today we're going to be doing a bit of a tutorial video on piston engines. A number of people in the comments have been asking me to do a tutorial like this. However, it's a bit more difficult than you might think simply because the number of piston engines I have and the overwhelming variety that there is with my engines. So on this end we have an inline 6 which uses a timing like belt which runs along the top of the engine that's what this orange bit is here we have a folding v8 with a valve based system uh, we have a fixed v8 with a timing plate that rotates then we have a inline 2 with a valve system again and we have whatever this engine is I don't even know how to explain how this thing works um, and then we just have like a standard inline 8. So in this tutorial video we're going to be covering something that looks a lot more like this. Um, and I'm going to be pretty much giving you the bare basics of piston engines just to get you guys started because piston engines can get really complex really quickly. So let's go ahead and hop down here into our little pit that we have and start building. Now whenever I build a piston engine, I always start with the crankshaft itself. And we're going to be doing three cylinders, so that's one. I'm going to paint my bearings because that's going to annoy me. Two. Three. So these are going to become our three cylinders on the crankshaft. And because we're going to be using a timing plate like this one and this one have, we're going to need a sensor on the drive shaft. Now the sensors are going to look forward and the timing plate is going to be right here on the box. Let's go ahead and actually just make it real quick. And we'll take care of that in a minute. Let me grab one more thing in my inventory. Actually, let's wait for the timing plate. Let's just wait for the timing plate. All right. Next thing, we need to actually make the pistons themselves. So some more bearings. Some joints, and we need the piston. And last but not least, let's go up here. So there we have the crankshaft, the pistons, and now we need to get some logic in here. And these are just all going to be AND gates. And we can actually start tidying up the engine, finishing the main structure. This is going to be an inline 3. And we just have to finish up the timing plate at this point. And let's get started with all the logic, all the timing. And for that, I'm actually going to weld it to the ground so we can actually get it moving. So for the most part we have the structure done, we do need one more thing which I forgot and we need a controller. There we go. This controller is connected up to these two bearings and will offset the actual drive shaft. Um, since we're doing a inline 3, let's go to 120 and that will separate out our sensors into a bit of a triangle pattern. Let's go from the sensor to the AND gate to the piston. Sensor, AND gate, piston. Sensor, AND gate, piston. And we need to get these 
sensor set up to detect this plate. So this one needs to be at either one or two. I usually do two for safety reasons. Make it look for black. This one needs to be set up to three. Make it look for black. This one needs to be set up to five. Make it look for black. And our switch. The switch will go to the logic and will allow us to turn on and off the engine. And now it's time for the timing of the engine. So we want to cover half this plate in black and we need to figure out where we want it. So this piston right here, we want it to be firing as it is. Um, and we want it to fire as soon as it starts leaning over to this side of the engine. So that, that, that. There we go, now it's actually running and we can improve it by just messing around with these. I didn't mean to turn that into a black sensor. And let's try that. There we go, let's a little jittery, but it's still functional and it works well. Now that we have it running like it should, now we can adjust these to be much faster. And if the piston end is still a little jittery, we can still work on that by that did not help. And for the most part, there we go. We can we can keep tinkering with this to make it even better. But for the most part, this is what a simple piston engine looks like. Now this scaled up is what you'd get with something like that V8, or the inline 8, sorry. This is basically just a very much scaled up version of what you're looking at here. However, all of those other engines are very, very much different, and I'm not going to be covering those today. However, if you guys would like some more tutorials like how this one works, or any of these, how these work, I might do them as well. But for now, I am going to have to end this episode here. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, any suggestions, leave them in the comments down below. Enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing. Please subscribe, it helps out a lot. And right now, shares help the channel the most. So if you do want to help the channel, please share this episode with a friend. Thanks for stopping by, thanks for sticking around, and until next time, peace.